Hey, how's it going? My name's Alex, and today we're gonna review some more content, some more videos. Uh, so let's take a sip of our coffee and get into this video. <coughs> so the video I'm talking about is called So I Quit and Left Toe Piglet, and it's from Holland Cash. And uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting video because there's a little bit of some stuff in the comments, and so that's why I'm doing this video. Um, obviously, uh, Danny and I, Holland Cash and I, we have a, a, a long history now. So, uh, so yeah, let's just get into the video, and I'll I'll break all that stuff down. All right, so here we go. Hi guys, what's going on? You want a surprise? You know what's funny? It's actually not a surprise at all. I believe in his previous video, uh, Holland Cash mentioned that uh, he it was just a temporary to try it out. Uh, so that you know, first point, it's it's not it's probably not even a surprise to most or any of you guys because Danny has a ton of experience, has a CDL. He used to do hot shot, but he had a bunch of RAM problems, and so he finally got those sorted out. So obviously, for someone as experienced as him, it probably doesn't come as a surprise at all. Go have a surprise. So. Hold on just a minute. Something's missing. Something, something's missing. Yeah. Yeah, it was time to change things up. Look what's changed up though. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's actually kind of cool. Covered six transport. Uh, that's actually a, not a, not a bad name. I think I believe Danny has a, a a military background. I think he was overseas and stuff like that. So um, or some kind of uh, armed forces background. So that's actually a really really interesting name. Covered six. I, I like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we're in business. We're back in business. I want to show you guys something pretty cool. Oh, you guys can't even see it with the sun. Hold on. Uh, and that's actually kind of a struggling in style uh, on his back window. That's uh, it's clever. So anyway, that's what's changed. Um, nothing negative, uh, nothing bad, um, nothing that um, led us to this decision. Really, we were just at that point in time where it was going to happen. So no hard feelings with that. I'm not going to make any crazy video about it. Um, it is what it is. That's the change that's happened. Um, so, shocker to that one. Now, I'm in New Mexico. You may, may be wondering, what are you doing in New Mexico then? So, uh, I actually talked to Danny and I, I know exactly what he's doing in New Mexico. Obviously, you can't hot shot without a trailer. Uh, and so, he's obviously picking up his trailer and he's headed there. Now, I know what it is. I That's not for me to say in this video, but I know he got a really sweet trailer. So, if you are interested in, in a proper, good, nice um, CDL uh, hot shot setup, may like go check out the video it'll be the first link in the description but um so yeah he's going to pick up his new trailer which is i hope he does a really thorough walk around um because like i said danny has experience in this business so he can really uh, help uh, all the cdl hot shotters hot shotters get off on the right foot so um so yeah let's continue i'm on my way to california you'll find out why soon enough y'all stay tuned yeah y'all heard right i uh I decided to go ahead and uh, leave Toe Piglet um, and uh, do my own thing. Uh, now, mind you, uh, working with Alex was not a hard task in any way, shape, or form. Um, Alex and I right here, he talks about the hard task, right? So working with me, hard task, right? Now, I want to, uh, I, I really do want to stress the benefit of non-CDL and it was especially in his situation because Danny was um, I believe he was uh, it was he he used to do oil field or oil and gas or something like that and and I apologize my, my twin daughters are right there so if you if it's picking up I'm, I'm sorry about that but <laughs> it's it's like 5 a.m. and they woke up early so it's like why not <laughs> but so he used to work in the oil and gas field right and I believe uh, obviously we know because of corona all the stuff that's happening everyone's getting laid off like crazy and so uh, 
uh, right here is me and Danny were talking, and I'm like, Danny, what are you doing? And he was just like, uh, I'm just sitting around not doing much, right? And the reason he specifically says, and, and, and highlighting this easy part really is what I want to do, is he had his truck, and he had his regular plates on his truck. And I had my 14GN sitting around, right? And I was like, well, just take your truck and put it to work. Right. And so because at the end of the day, he wasn't doing anything. So that's why, like when he says easy, it really was that easy. And, and that's probably one of the slightest benefits of non CDL that it's super quick to get into. So if you're an experienced owner operator or you have tons of CDL or you have tons of, you know, experience in the business, like to jump into to, to take your first step into non CDL, it's all about finding a company to lease under. And that's it because your plates should be fine, right? Your normal plates. And he was surprised. I remember when we talking, we didn't really record a video when I when we first started. But I remember we, we, we were talking, he was like, wait, it's that it? That's it? Just a lease agreement and a couple other pay, pay, paperwork stuff. And that's it. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. He's like, wow, this was pretty. So really, it was easy for him to get on board um, with a, with a, like any carrier for that matter. It doesn't have to be me. It, it would have been that easy as a non CDL with any carrier, uh, because and, and now especially you know on the backside of Corona, you could say is like all the DMVs, all the places are still shut down. Appointments are like months out in the future. And really, I'm hearing that a portion plates are starting to take like a month to get in the mail. So uh, just keep that in mind if you are looking to get in the business as a CDL transporter, uh, that like double check those things because the worst thing that you could do is go pay for insurance, buy a truck, buy a trailer, and then figure out that, oh darn, uh, I don't have a portion plates and I can't get them for a month. You know what I mean? That would really, really be bad. So just make sure you double check those things before you just go in it and, and jump in feet first. I uh, have a really good relationship, a really good friendship, um, got along, no problems, no issues, um, was always taken care of. Right, and I want to highlight the the really good relationship, friendship, right? Guys, understand, Danny and I, have we've been talking uh, probably for a several, uh, we're, what, coming up to two years now, right? Um, Danny had a channel, um, and then when all, all the problems started happening with his truck, I kind of helped him through that, and then I bought his channel, and then uh, he sent me that last video that I quit video that I edited, uploaded, and monetized his channel, removed all the, uh, like, copyrighted music that he had, and really, his channel, when I bought it went from like 1400 subscribers to like 4,000 and then at like 4,000 subscribers I was like hey Danny these people really care about you have your channel back and so I just gave him back the channel I said hey man if you're getting if you're gonna get back in it whatever you know what I mean just uh, you know upload update the people what's going on and so really like we've been talking and you know so like like it is an understatement that we're good friends. That's like essentially an understatement. So understand there's a couple of comments that I've read that, you know, they think there's some negativity. There is absolutely no negative. Danny was an absolute pleasure to work with. He got me a clean inspection, which obviously it's pretty easy to do um, as long as you have your ducks in a row, which is, I mean, you know, that'll help out my safety score. So it's like no, absolutely no problems. I cannot stress that enough either. And so nothing drove me away um, from Alex. Now, mind you guys, when I when I told you guys I was going to start doing the non-CDL hot shot, that was to show you guys exactly what problems you can run into with hot shot as a non-CDL. And I don't, I don't think he's broken down uh, a couple of things that he had on the road. Um, the first and foremost was he did run into some weight issues a couple of times, uh, you know, and that's one of those things. Non-CDL isn't necessarily about doing the work on the road. Non-CDL is about doing the work on the load board, on the calling, on the talking to brokers, on convincing them to pay more, on explaining, you know, operating costs. Like it, it's more or less a computer work oriented versus um, just putting in the miles on a truck, right? Because uh, as a truck driver, as a, you know, maybe a CDL hotshot, you could kind of book a decent load and just go back and forth. That's pr pretty easy. But as a non-CDL, you're essentially putting in a little bit more work on the computer so that to make it happen, right? So, uh, and, and I, I hope he really does like a really good follow-up video um, because I think that'd be, that'd be important. But the other problem that he uh, talked about in, a pre in his previous video was he did have a breakdown with my trailer um, one of my races was bad um, and a race is the thing where the bearing sits in like in your hub and they're really hard to switch out so and I think that's partially my fault because I don't remember when the last time I replaced the race 
or usually I don't replace just the race either. I usually just take the whole hub, throw it away, or the hub and drum, throw it away and just get a new hub and drum, right? And I realized, because hub and drums, I think they're like the whole thing is only like 50 or no, it's like a hundred something bucks, right? So it's like at that point, it's like, it, it, it's so cheap that buying a $20 race, knocking it out, putting it back in, you know, did you hammer it back in all the way? I don't know. So it's like, I'd rather just replace the whole thing, right? So, and I don't think the, when I did the overhaul on the trailer, I don't think the hub and drum was something that I replaced as well. Um, so I think those are the two issues that I had. He had some overweight problems and he had trailer problems. And so, um, and I, I believe he he did the video about the trailer, but nothing about the how hard it is to find a load. Um, but yeah, let's continue. Operator, it was just to try to, you know, a guy that has a CDL, how do you know what the life is of a non-CDL guy if you're not gonna actually do it? So that's what that was. That was very temporary. Um, now, in the future, will Alex and I work again together? Maybe, I mean, it's very possible. Uh, I would rather work with somebody than against somebody. I think he's got a great direction in where he's headed. Um, mind you, it's not, his his business model doesn't entail me as the <laughs> Hold on, the twins are making so much noise. Let me go check that out. <laughs> All right. Owner operator kind of structure, you know what I mean? And so it's really not. Okay, what he's talking about is my business model. Like, I, and it's not, I'm, so, I'm not some guru, super smart guy that I have this awesome business model, guys. All, all I'm trying to do is I want to stick to drivers and um, I want to do enterprise trucks with company drivers. I'm, I don't want, I, I really, I'm not taking my company the direction of owner operators. Now, I say that now, but right now I'm looking at the numbers and I might have to take on some owner operators just to make it worthwhile with the dispatcher, with the, you know, with the team that I'm trying to assemble. And like owner operators bring in essentially I don't want to call it easy money but essentially it's easy money right because think about it, a company driver I have to shell out 25,000 wait three months for a truck and trailer get it all ready give it to the driver and then take two years or a year and a half to make that money back as a profit right for the business whereas an owner operator he's gonna invest that 25 grand I just got to find him loads so it, it, owner operators are more profitable to a carrier than company drivers, they really are. However, owner operators also um, are a little bit harder for your dispatcher. So if you have dispatchers in training that you wanna like teach slowly, don't give them the owner operators, you know what I mean? Cause then those guys are gonna be mad. Hey, your dispatcher sucks, Alex, right? So th th it's this balancing act of like, to the new people, you give your company drivers, to your experienced dispatcher, you give your owner operators, right? And I think by doing kind of the, do both of those things, you can grow a, a decent company. Um, now that's all theories and talk, and so we're, we're gonna give it a shot. I have an experienced dispatcher, um, and, and he's doing really good with my company drivers, but I, I told him like, hey man, what, what can we do so that you can start training the newer people that I wanna bring on? And so we're figuring out how to train dispatchers right now, um, so that then we could get those company trucks onto the uh, the dispatchers, onto the new dispatchers, right? And so that's what he's talking about, Danny, right? Hauling cash, that's what he's talking about, is that um, right now the business model does not include owner operators. It's just, I want to get to three to five company trucks roughly. And then from there I'll go like, okay, great. Three to five trucks is enough for one or two dispatchers in training. And then the other trucks, maybe we can get to 10 with, so five and five, five company trucks, five owner operators. That's the goal. My place to dictate that. And so I know, Hey, you know, I saw what he was doing. He had some things that was in the, you know, in the works and I was like, Hey, now's a good time as ever to go ahead for me to sidestep on out and now, the other thing that Danny is talking about, um, like uh, getting out uh, or, you know, from elite deleasing from, uh, from me, um, the important part is, uh, that his insurance was literally half as cheap, half. Okay. Literally half. So, uh, imagine, you know, you're paying, let's say $1,500 at least on, uh, well, when he went to his own numbers, now he's paying like 800. Uh, so really it, it was in his best interest to, uh, to kind of, uh, switch companies also. Right. So that's why this, this was literally a win-win. So it was a win-win when he started because it was easy. You hit the road with the regular plates with my trailer, boom. So it was super easy for him to jump in and it was it was absolutely beneficial for him to exit because he jumped in right when Corona, I think when he started, Corona was like not at the peak anymore. And so freight was starting to really get back to normal because like four or five months ago, it was super, super critical time. A bunch of the rates were just dirt garbage cheap. And, you know, since then things have kind of started to pick back up and it looks a little more normal. But, you know, so he jumped in at the good time 
time, win-win, and then he's exiting at a perfect time as well, also win-win. So it really, really does make sense here. From my own numbers. And of course he was okay with that, he was cool with that, he understood, uh, wished me the best of luck, I wished him the best of luck. So there's no harm feelings at all. Um, it was simply just a matter of a business decision, um, making that decision uh, to uh, you know, go my own path, uh, do my own thing. And so Covered Six is official, it is locked in, everything is active, numbers are ready to roll, and we're on our way to California. To see what's in California, y'all are gonna have to stick around and hang out. It's not a very long video. I didn't intend for this to be a long video. Um, it's Right, <laughs> you know, and, and I actually called him up when he dropped this video. He uh, looks like September 19th. I'm recording this reaction on, um, looks like it is September 21st, right? So a couple days later, but I called him I'm like, Danny, what's wrong with you, man? Why, why didn't you like make a big deal about it for the views, you know? And he's a super respectful guy. He's like, Alex, I'm not about to trash your name or company or anything like that. So, uh, so like Danny is a super, super respectful guy and I absolutely like working with him. Absolutely no problems. Uh, but you know, I feel like kind of a missed, uh, a missed opportunity for fake YouTube drama, right? <laughs> but hey, uh, but at least you guys know that things, all things are good. And this is just the nature of the beast that owner operators come and go regardless of how much you like them or give them a de good deal it doesn't matter right at the end of the day because like everybody wants to build their own reputation and you can only do that with your own members unfortunately and knowledgeable experienced owner operators come and go quick so just keep that in mind if you are thinking about doing the owner operated model. Um, and that's one of the problems. That's actually one of the reasons I want to do at least five company drivers because I know those five trucks. Sure, the drivers can come and go, but at the end of the day, those five trucks will be mine. There's gonna be at least a flat kind of, at least a base level of revenue from those five trucks consistently. But the owner operators, you switch them in and out every so often. So, uh, so just keep in mind if you are thinking about getting your own company and taking on uh, owner ops. Primarily just to let you guys know that, hey, yes, I did leave Alex. I did leave Toe Piglet, the, uh, the brand, the company, the whole nine. Um, I'm doing my own thing, running my own numbers, uh, doing my own thing. But everything will be um, at my own my own way of doing it. And so, you know, it was it was great while it uh, while it lasted. There's nothing wrong with it. If you have the chance to get on with a guy like that. Uh, work with a guy like that, pick his brain, um, and he was picking mine. And so, you know, did I really bring him anything to the table? I mean, solid work, solid owner operator, uh, solid performance. Right, and the important part with owner operators isn't what an owner operator can bring, it's what they don't bring, right? And at the end of the day, with Danny and, and with uh, Load Miser too, my previous owner operator, which let me know if you want, to, want me to do a reaction video on that. I think his videos are doing really good, so that's why it's like, why react to a video that's already doing really well? Uh, but uh, so the 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 benefit, like, like I said, the owner operator, it's not what they bring, it's what they don't bring. And what I didn't want is somebody that I have to hold their hand, somebody that I have to train them, somebody that I really have to like oh no you got to do this and do this and I have to worry and I have to call and say hey man this is wrong this is wrong fix this fix that like I didn't want that right and so uh, did he bring me anything unique no but he did not bring me any problems or hassles and so that's why you really want to try to be that kind of owner operator and then more more companies will want to work with you so um, yeah that's that's cool performance uh, as far as doing anything special for him out, out of out of anywhere, you know, that he couldn't do for himself. No, I mean he's a very capable man, and so um, had a good time working with him. Everything went smooth, and uh, so now we're we're on our way to doing our own thing and uh, doing things to our own flavor. And so you guys hang tight. We'll see what California has in store for us. Um, till then, you guys be safe, be healthy, be happy. Keep your shiny sides up at all times. Okay, so anyways, uh, overall good video, a little short honestly, but uh, but still the point remains the same. That um, but yeah, it, it it's gonna be exciting where where his channel goes from here, what kind of equipment, how he how he shows you know the, the maybe the load booking process for a, a CDL and how he really compares it to non CDL. So that'll be that'll be super super interesting. But anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, my twins are hungry, so I'm gonna go fit, feed them. I, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.